In this video, I'll show you a super cool trick on making a quick and easy level editor for Unity. This trick was inspired by a live stream by Cool18, so credit goes to him for the idea. Basically, what we'll do is create a low resolution image and use the color data from that image to populate our level. That means that we can use any image editing software to paint pixels on top of our image. And when we start the game, Unity will then replace each pixel with some kind of prefab. That could be a ground tile, a coin, an enemy, or even the player's spawn point. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The assets I'm using here from the 2D Mega Pack. You can get it from devassets.com. As with everything else, it's pay what you want. There will be a link in the description. I have a player, a ground object, and a coin. And if we collide with the coin here, we will pick it up. If you want to learn how to set this stuff up, check out my course on creating a 2D platformer. So let's begin by right clicking in the hierarchy, creating an empty object. Let's reset the transform on this and let's call it level generator. Let's drag it to the top here so we can always see it. Let's hit add component and let's create a custom script called level generator as well. It's going to be of type C sharp and let's hit create an add. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. So first off, we can delete the two using tags at the top and we can also delete the update method. You can easily have the level generator create multiple different levels. But in our case, we'll focus on making a level from a single map. So let's first off create a variable for this map. It's going to be public so that we can access it in the inspector and it's going to be of type texture 2D. This will allow us to put an image into this slot. Let's just name it map. Meaning inside of our start method, we want to generate a level based on the color data inside of our map. So let's call a function called generate level. Let's make this function. It's going to be of type void because we don't need it to return anything. It's going to be called generate level and it's not going to take any arguments. Now in order to generate a level, we need to load data from our map. To do that, we'll loop through each individual pixel that makes up our texture. And depending on the color of the pixel, we'll then spawn a corresponding tile. So to loop through our texture, we'll create two for loops. The first one will loop through the width of our textures. So let's go for, we'll create an integer variable called x and set it equal to zero. We then want to keep looping as long as x is less than map.width. And each time we loop through, we want to increase x by one. Then for each of the pixels on the x axis, we also want to loop through all the pixels on the y. So we'll create another for loop here where we create another integer called y and set it equal to zero. And we want to continue as long as y is less than map.height. And again, after each iteration, we'll add one onto our y variable. So we are now looping through all of the pixels in our map. You might think, holy smokes, that's a lot of iterations. And yes, if your texture is huge, this is going to take some time. But luckily, the computer can handle operations like this super fast. So for each pixel in our map, we want to check if that pixel's color corresponds to a certain tile. So let's call a method called generate tile, and we want to feed it our x and y coordinates. Then when we create this method, generate tile, we want to take in an integer x and an integer y. The first thing that we want to do here is get the color of the pixel that we're looking at. Luckily, Unity has a function that makes this really easy. All we need to do is call map.getPixel and input the x and y coordinates. Now this is going to return a color and so we can store this in a variable of type color and let's call it pixel color. And now we can start doing things based on the color of the pixel. For example, we can check if pixel color dot alpha is equal to zero. That means that our pixel is totally transparent. And in that case, we want to just totally ignore it. So we'll go ahead and return before we get to spawn any tiles. And let's also leave a comment here saying that the pixel is transparent Let's ignore it. If it's not transparent, well, then we want to check what tile we should spawn. But before we do that, let's just check if everything is working. Let's write debug.log and let's write out the pixel color. So now we should see that when we start the game, it's going to try and generate a level by looping through all of the pixels in our map. For each pixel, it's going to call the generate tile function, which is then going to get the color data from that particular pixel and store it inside of pixel color. If the pixel is transparent, then we simply skip it. And if it's not, we write out a message to the console with its color data. Let's save this and head into Unity. And we now have an empty slot for our map. So let's go ahead and create one. For this, you can use any image editing tool. I'm going to be using Photoshop. All we need to do is go ahead and create a new image. We can call this level one. I'm going to make it 64 by 16 pixels. Let's hit okay. Let's zoom in on it. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna to switch to the pencil tool by holding down this button and selecting pencil tool. 
and then gonna right click, make sure the size is set to one pixel and the hardness to 100. And as the color, I'm then going to select a total black. Now I can start painting out some ground elements. I'm gonna use the eraser if I mess up here. So each one of these pixels are now going to represent one tile. And I'm using a total black as the color for my crates. Make sure to disable whatever layer you have in the background so that everything else is transparent. Now in order to save this file, let's go file, save as, Let's navigate to our project. Now because I'm using Photoshop, I can save it directly as a Photoshop file. If you're using any other software, I recommend saving as a PNG. This, unlike a JPEG, will keep the transparent background. So let's now save, hit OK. And when we now go into Unity, we should see the level one texture. We want to make sure that the filter mode here is set to point and our compression to none. This way Unity won't blur out our texture in any way. Let's also go under advanced and it's very important here to remember to check read write enabled. Otherwise we won't be able to load color data from our texture and it'll throw us an error. Let's then hit apply. Let's select our level generator. Let's drag in our level one texture. Let's also remove our ground and our coin from the scene. And when we now hit play, we can see in the console that for each pixel, it throws out a debug.log statement. And you can see all of these have zero on the red, zero on the green and zero on the blue, which means that they are black and an alpha of one. Also note that I made 46 pixels and we now have 46 messages. So now we need to tell Unity that whenever we get a black pixel, we want to spawn a ground prefab. Normally when you want to associate two values like this, you use a dictionary. And that is definitely the fastest way to go about it. But unfortunately, Unity by default doesn't allow us to edit dictionaries inside of the inspector. And so we would have to create some kind of editor script to allow us to do that or pick up an asset on the asset store like Odin or Full Inspector. Instead, let's use a normal array where each item in the array is a class that we create storing both a color and a prefab. Let's right click in our project, hit create, C sharp script, and let's call this class color to prefab. Let's then double click it, hit reload all. Let's remove the two namespaces at the top. Let's also make sure this doesn't derive from mono behavior and let's delete both our methods. Now in this class, we want to have a public color. Let's call that color. We also want a public game object, which is going to be our prefab. To make sure that this will draw in the inspector, we want to mark it at the top as system.serializable. So now when we save this, head into the level generator script and at the top, create a new public color to prefab array where every element in our array is a color to prefab, storing a color that maps to a specific prefab. So we can call this array our color mappings. When we then save this and head into Unity, we can see a color mappings array appear. And if we now increase the size, we can see an element here with first a color. We want this to be totally black, which it is already. And we also want to bump up the alpha to 255. And we can then drag in our ground prefab. Now all we need to do is go to the bottom here and inside this function that is called for each pixel, we also want to loop through all of the elements in our color to prefab array. So we'll go for each color to prefab and we'll call the element we are currently looking at a color mapping in our color mappings array. So we'll loop through each element in our color mappings array and check if the current element that we're looking at, which is called color mapping dot color is equal to, so we'll use dot equals the pixel color. And if it is, well then it's a match. And so we can instantiate the prefab. So we'll call instantiate and the prefab that we want to instantiate is now our color mapping dot prefab. And the position where we want to instantiate it is given by our coordinates up here. And so we can go and create a vector two called position and set it equal to a new vector two where we give it our X and Y pixel coordinates, which are now real unity coordinates. And we then simply feed it our position. We don't care about the rotation. So we'll just go quaternion.identity, which means no rotation. In other words, a rotation of zero, zero, zero. And then just to clean everything up, we can also parent it to this current object. So the object that we want to specify as the parent is our transform. So now if we save that and go into unity, Double check that our color mapping is set up correctly between a total black and our ground prefab and hit play. Voila, we've got a map generated from a texture that we can very easily edit in order to change our level. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's super cool.
Awesome! And from here on it's super easy to add new elements to our array. We simply increase the size, choose a color for our coin, we could go for a yellow color. So let's give it 255 on our red and 255 on our green. To make sure that we're using the exact same color we can even copy the hex code down here. Then drag in our coin prefab and inside of Photoshop or whatever else you are now using, let's create a new layer. I will now set the red channel to 255 and the green channel to 255 as well. And so we can paint in some coins. It's good to reward your player with plenty of coins. Let's now save this. And as soon as we now go into Unity and hit play, our level has updated. And we can play through and get all of the coins. We can even control where our player spawns using this same method. If you had enemies in your game, you could spawn those as well. To spawn our player, we simply go to our level generator, add a third element. For this one, let's use, say, a total blue color. As the prefab, let's drag in our player. Inside of Photoshop, let's now change the color to blue, create a new layer, and let's set the spawn point here. Then when we save this, go into Unity, delete our player, and hit play. Voila! Our player spawns in the middle of our scene. So I hope you will take this and apply it to any game that you are currently working on. I find it's a great tool, especially when doing Ludum Diary games, because it allows you to really quickly cram out new levels. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, if you want to grab the script for yourself, you can do so at the Brachis Forum. Just go forum.brachis.com. There will also be a link in the description. I recently pushed an update to the forum, so it should now be faster and more stable, and most importantly, spam free. So if you have any questions, I really suggest posting them there. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May, and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Stone Gamer, CMDR Firestone 38, Thomas Vorley, James Callahan, Cyborg Mummy, and Jason the Tito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash